Today, we are making some easy and delicious vegan beef and bean burritos. These are freezer friendly and perfect for a quick, low effort lunch, whether you work from home or at the office. And I base these off the old microwavable burritos I used to eat as a teenager and well into my 20s, but obviously these are bigger and better and vegan. We're gonna make a red and green chili version, neither of which are authentic, as I used minimal ingredients to keep this as simple as possible, but they do taste amazing and they're easy to prepare. For the veggies, I'm just gonna dice up a green and red bell pepper, as well as a couple of jalapenos. I also diced up an onion and grilled it, but I didn't use it since my wife has an onion sensitivity, and these burritos were mostly for her to take to work. But obviously, use onion if you like, I'll include it in the recipe on the blog. And you can cook these veggies up and add them into the beef or bean mixture if you like. I kept them separate for the sake of the photos, and I kind of like getting different layers in each bite, but mix it all up if you want to as well. Just grill them for about 8 to 10 minutes or as desired. Now for the beef, we are using tofu, and you can use whatever vegan meat you like, TVP, beyond or impossible, but I've really fallen in love with tofu recently, and we're gonna do something a little different today. We're gonna grate it to get some shreds. And this is a lot easier if you start with the super firm tofu that's vacuum sealed. If you can only find extra firm packed in water, just press it for at least 30 minutes. And once we have two blocks of tofu grated, it's time to season and cook them. And we're doing things a little differently here as well. I wanted to make the marinade using only common ingredients and for cooking the tofu, I usually start with baking, but I wanted to test out pan frying it instead. So for the marinade, we're just gonna use two teaspoons of this beefless broth, which you can totally use veggie bouillon instead, or this beefless broth powder I found at Grocery Outlet for 99 cents. But then next is a quarter cup each of soy sauce, nutritional yeast, and neutral oil of your choice, two teaspoons of garlic powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, and in case you're wondering, onion powder doesn't bother my wife, so it's fine. And then two teaspoons of smoked paprika, and then lastly, a quarter cup of water that's yellow from the residual oil in the measuring cup and not dirty water. Whisk that up and that is our simple but delicious marinade. And even though I did make this with minimal ingredients, if you have stuff like this, please feel free to improvise with it and add as much as you'd like. In fact, it should be noted that this recipe was largely improvised, so I highly recommend you have fun and try things out. Now let's get our shredded tofu and grill it up to get it a bit chewier. And I recommend doing this in batches if you don't have an extra large skillet or griddle like this. I tried doing a batch in my regular 12 inch skillet and I overcrowded the pan. This resulted in tofu that clumped together and it took a lot longer to cook down than if I had just split it into two batches. It was still super good, but the tofu wasn't as tender as the other batch I did on my big old griddle. But you just wanna cook this down for about 10 to 12 minutes or until the tofu starts to get a bit of color on it. Taste some and test the texture and when it feels slightly dried out, let's add in our marinade. And then stir that around to coat and I'm gonna add in some optional blackstrap molasses and gravy master, mostly for color and a little flavor, but seriously, they are super optional, so don't stress it. And after just a few minutes, the marinade should be coated and absorbed by the tofu. Another great reason to grate the tofu is it will rehydrate super quick, so this process doesn't take long at all. And you could totally eat this as is, it's gonna taste and feel very beefy, but we're gonna make some quick and dirty red and green sauce. Now you could totally just get some red and green enchilada sauce if you wanna be even lazier than me, but I'm gonna make something simple with some tomato sauce and chipotles in adobo. So first to our beef, I'm gonna add in one tablespoon of cumin, and oregano. Stir that around to coat and then we're gonna form a mosh pit and add in a little oil and four cloves of minced garlic. Let the garlic mosh on its own for a little bit and then before it burns itself, we're gonna add everybody into the pit and get them all nice and sweaty together. Next, we're gonna add in about two cups of tomato sauce, stir that around, and then a quarter cup of diced chipotles and adobo are gonna stage dive, mix that in, and that's basically it. Taste and adjust for seasoning as always, but that is our not authentic at all red chili beef. And for the green sauce, we're gonna do the same thing, but with two cups worth of this tomatillo salsa and some canned green chilies. You can also add some Rotel if you like, and you can of course make this kind of stuff from scratch, but I wanted to keep this as quick and easy as possible. Also, I totally biffed it and forgot to add the chilies here, so I just mixed them in at the end. But either way, that is our quick and easy green chili beef. For the beans, I kept it simple too. Just get about four cups or 750 grams worth of beans. You can either mash up some pinto beans, use some refried beans, or a combo of both. I ended up mashing half my beans and using half whole beans for some variety in texture. 
For seasoning, I simply use three tablespoons of my homemade taco seasoning recipe linked in description. But like I said, season this however you like with whatever you like. For some added zip, I also added in the juice of one lime and that is our super quick, easy, and delicious refried beans. So now we just need to let everything cool. I like to do this on baking sheets as it cools down the quickest, but we need our fillings to be cold when we fill our burritos, otherwise they're gonna steam the tortilla and make them soggy. Speaking of tortillas, here's the two I like the most. I went with the smaller size, but make them as big as you'd like. With the smaller tortillas, you should get about eight burritos weighing in at 12 ounces or 350 grams each. Oh, also feel free to sprinkle in some vegan cheese if you want to. Totally optional though, and they are great without it, so don't sweat it if you don't have any. But once the filling is cooled, warm up the tortilla so it's pliable, and then add your filling. I went with about 300 grams worth, and like I said, you can mix it all up to make this easier and faster, or do it layered. I did a few of both. Then, wrap your burritos to the best of your ability. I'm far from a burrito wrapping authority, but these all stayed together, so I'm doing all right. And we're gonna wrap those burritos in some parchment or deli paper. We're just gonna roll it up and then fold the sides over like so, and then we're gonna repeat that step with some foil. We're gonna add these to a freezer safe bag or container and freeze for up to six weeks. And to reheat them, simply unwrap the foil and microwave them in the paper for about three or four minutes. And then I highly suggest grilling them to brown the outside. I like to preheat my skillet while the burrito is in the microwave. But this step adds texture and also makes the burrito a little more structurally sound. Also, you can reuse the parchment paper to rewrap the burrito and then cut it in half if you want to do that. But either way, top it with your favorite hot sauce and dig in, and I can guarantee you're going to love these burritos way more than those dinky little stinky burritos from your youth. I can't overstate just how awesome it is to be three minutes away from a delicious and satisfying burrito, so I really do think you all should give this a try, and if you want to make some freezer-friendly breakfast burritos, check out this video right here, and until then, I'll see you all next time.